An important milestone this morning for one of the most daring space programs ever. Europe's Rosetta probe launched 10 years ago. The goal? To become the first spacecraft to make a soft landing on a comet. Two and a half years ago, Rosetta, Rosetta went sleep to save power, but this morning European mission controllers are waiting to see if an onboard alarm did its job waking Rosetta up. Derek Pitts is the chief astronomer at the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia. Good morning. Good morning. So, so tell us what is happening here and, and what is the consequence of this? Well, what's going on right now, Charlie, is that the Rosetta, Rosetta spacecraft has turned itself on. It's begun to warm up its internal uh, electronics. And the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to begin to rotate itself around so that it faces the sun, gather more sun for its uh, solar panels. And then from there, it will begin to orient itself so that it can point back to Earth and send a signal to the European Space Agency controllers in Germany to let them know that the spacecraft is alive and well and pretty close mm. to catching up with the comet it's going to take a close look at. Can you just give us a sense of the logistics of trying to land on a moving comet? That seems like it would be <laughs> yes, an incredible challenge. It is, a it is a very big challenge to do this sort of thing because you have a spacecraft that's uh, six foot by six foot on a side. The solar panels are 105 feet long. But this is a comet that's 500 million miles out away from the Earth. And it's as if you're trying to put a golf ball through a window from New York to San Francisco. So it's a really <laughs> difficult challenge. And if, in fact, it's successful, what's next? So this spacecraft, it's on its way to visit a particular comet called churyumov gerasimenko And the idea is to visit this comet and actually put a lander right down on the surface of the comet's nucleus, the first time that's ever been done in an effort to gather more information about how comets form, what their composition is like, and what dynamics cause the comet to behave in the way it does. So it's a really tricky uh, mission, and it will be a tremendous accomplishment to be able to do that. What can we learn from comets? What, what, why, why the need to study them? What will they teach us? Comets are objects that are left over from the earliest history of our solar system. And for us to get a really good idea of what conditions were like at the time of the beginning of the solar system, we have to look to those repositories where all that information is stored, in a sense. And comet nuclei are that repository. They're frozen uh, balls of gas and dust. And the gas and dust that's locked up in the nucleus gives us information about what conditions were like at the time. Temperatures, compositions, materials present, forces going on, all sorts of things like that to help us better understand how solar systems get their start. One last quick question. What happens if it fails and it doesn't wake up? The controllers from Earth will send a signal up to the spacecraft to jog its memory. Hopefully, its internal clocks will get it started and it'll be able to start all the processes to come awake and uh, get, get on course. Derek Pitts, thank you so much.